This is a day that we honor and celebrate one man in all of humanity, all of creation that could fulfill all of these prophecies. Amen. Do you hear the sounds of the, of the prophets declaring who Jesus is? Amen. Then the second sound that we hear is the sound that comes from the Word of God. I'm so thankful for the Word of God. I cannot say it enough how thankful I am to the Word of God. Now, the Word of God was written over 1,500 years, 
A 1,500-year span is how long it took to write this entire book. 1,500 years. Think about that. That had to go over 40 generations of people. Can you imagine writing the same thing that your grand grandfather was writing and your great-grandfather? Think about 40 generations of people. Amen. Generations past to generations future. Think about trying to come into agreement with that. So 40 generations. It was written by more than 40 authors throughout that 1,500-year span from every walk of life. There were kings that wrote some of this Bible. There were peasants that wrote some of this. There were philosophers. There were fishermen. There were poets. They were statesmen and they were scholars. There were all walks of life. Moses wrote some of the word of God. He was a political leader and trained in universities in Egypt. Peter was a fisherman. Amos was a herdsman. Joshua was a military general. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king. Daniel was a prime minister. Luke was a physician. Solomon was a king. Matthew was a tax collector. And Paul was a rabbi. Amen. So all of these different backgrounds were fulfilling. The authors uh, uh, were, were part of the authors who were writing this book. And they were written in all manner of places. Moses wrote while he was in the wilderness. Jeremiah wrote while he was in the dungeon. Daniel wrote while he was on a hillside and then later in a palace. Paul wrote while he was inside prison walls. Luke wrote while he was traveling. John wrote while he was imprisoned on the Isle of Patmos. Others wrote during military campaigns and other uh, uh, events going on in history. Amen. It was written at times of war like David, or it was written, also written in times of peace like Solomon in his, when he was writing. It was written at the peak of people's uh, joy and, and, uh, and uh, uh, rejoicing, and it was also written at the depths of sorrow and despair. Amen. It was written over Asia, over Africa, and over Europe on three different continents. It was written in three different languages, in Hebrew, in Aramaic, in Greek, and finally, its subject matter includes hundreds of controversial topics, yet the topics of all of these these uh, writers, as all of these biblical writers spoke, they spoke with a harmony that pointed to one thing, and that that was that Jesus Christ was sent as God's redemption for man. Everything throughout the Bible is telling us God wanted to redeem mankind unto himself and say that I want to bring uh, my creation back into fellowship with me. That's exciting to me. We're not just talking about something that is a coincidence, just something to add to another list of religions in the world. No other religion has this much prophecy fulfilled and this much going on. Can you imagine over 1,500 years before now? Let's think about that. 600 uh, AD. I don't even know what was going on. My, I love U.S. history, but I get lost in world history way back. So I, I don't know. Maybe you know some of that. Some of you historians may know. But I'm trying to think how uh, crazy it would be for us to try to get in, in uh, the same line of thinking and the same philosophies and the same uh, uh, outcome in our writing uh, to go along with a, the with a same theme. I'll tell you, there's only one way that could happen. And Paul talks about it in the, in the book of Timothy when he said it, it was people of old who were inspired and breathed on by the breath of God inspired by the Holy Ghost to write down this holy script so that you and I could fall into a line that is leading us to heaven and leading us uh, in relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that God knows what he's doing. Can somebody say amen? Woo. Amen. That's amazing to me. Amen. What's so amazing about the Bible, this is not just a collection of writings from various authors. This is something that comes together in a unified voice that is talking about uh, how God has a plan to bring mankind back to himself. Amen. That's amazing. Amen. That's, uh, do you hear what I'm hearing? Amen. So the Bible adds its voices to the prophets and, and to, it declares that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Amen. Because 
every book of the Bible uh, declares uh, Jesus Christ and reveals Jesus Christ throughout the word of God. There are 66 books in the Bible and Genesis tells us that Jesus is the creator and the promised redeemer. Exodus says he's the Passover lamb. Leviticus says he's the high priest. Numbers says he's water in the desert. Deuteronomy says he becomes the curse for us. Joshua says he's the commander of the Lord's army. Amen. Uh, Judges says he delivers us from injustice. Ruth says Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. First Samuel says he's the prophet, priest, and king. Second Samuel says he's the king of grace and love. First King says he's a ruler greater than Solomon. Second King says he's a powerful prophet. First Chronicles says he's the son of David that is coming to rule. Second Chronicles says he's the king who reigns eternally. Ezra says he's the priest that proclaims freedom to the captive. Nehemiah says he's the one who restores what's broken down. Esther says he's the protector of his people. Job says that Jesus is the mediator between God and man. The book of Psalms says he's our song in the morning and in the night. Proverbs says he's our wisdom. Amen. Ecclesiastes says he's our meaning for life. Song of Solomon says he's the author of faithful love. Isaiah says he's a suffering servant. Jeremiah says he's a weeping Messiah. Lamentation says he assumes God's wrath for us. Ezekiel declares Jesus as the son of man. Daniel declares him as the stranger in the fire with us. Amen. Hosea declares him as the faithful husband even when we run away from him. Joel declares him as the one sending his spirit to his people. Amos delivers just, says he delivers justice to the oppressed. Obadiah says that he's the judge of those who do evil. Amen. Micah says he's the one that cast our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Nahum says that Jesus proclaims future world peace that we cannot even imagine. Habakkuk declares that he is one who crushes injustice. Zephaniah the prophet said the warrior who saves us. Haggai says that Jesus is the one who will restore our worship. Zechariah says that he's the, uh, he's the Messiah who was pierced for us. Malachi says he's the son of righteousness who brings healing. Matthew says he's Messiah who is the king. Martha says he's Messiah who is a servant. Luke says he's the Messiah who's a deliverer. John says he's the Messiah who's, a God, in the, who's God in the flesh. Acts says he's the spirit who dwells in his people. Romans declares Jesus is the righteousness of God. First Corinthians says that Jesus is the power and love of God. Second Corinthians says that Jesus is the down payment of what is to come. Galatians says he's our very life. Ephesians says he's the unity of our church. Amen. Philippians says he's the joy of our life. Colossians says that he holds the supreme position in all things. First Thessalonians, he says that he's our comfort in the last days. Second Thessalonians says he is our returning king. First Timothy says he's the savior of the worst of sinners. Second Timothy says he's the leader of leaders. Titus says he's the foundation of truth. Philemon says he's our mediator. Hebrews says he's our great high priest. James says he matures our faith. Amen. First Peter says he's our hope in times of suffering. Second Second Peter, the one who guards us from false teaching. First John says he's the source of all fellowship. Second John says Jesus is God in the flesh. Third John says Jesus is the source of all truth. And Jude proclaims him as the one who protects us from stumbling. And then the book of Revelation declares that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who makes all things new, the one who's coming again for his people. Do you hear what I hear? Amen. I hear the prophets declaring Jesus as the Messiah. I hear the word of God declaring that Jesus is the Messiah. And I want you to understand there's no reason to get blinded by this world. Amen. To get to following somebody else. Amen. We're too close to the end to change our allegiance now. Amen. I don't care how old fashioned the world says we are. Amen. We started this thing in Jesus. We need to, there's only one way to keep, I was going to say we're going to end this thing. No, we're just going to end this current life as G, in Jesus. But we're going to, we've started something. When we started in Jesus, we started eternity in him. Amen. This is, this polyphonic sound of the Messiah's arrival. 
to earth comes from the prophets and the word of God, and it's also a sound that needs to be proclaimed today from the church. Amen. And I want to just remind you, you are the church. Amen. I am the church. We're all part of the church. So this sound needs to come from our lips. It needs to come from us. The great news is that we who have been born again are called to add our voice to the polyphony of voices that are going forward and proclaiming the Messiah has come. We're called to share with others what we've been told, what we've experienced, what we've uh, learned on our own. Every saint of God who has experienced the revelation of God, and uh, we've experienced it in different ways based on our experiences, based on our personalities, based on our giftings, based on our understanding, but we all have experienced the word of God. Every one of us in this room have different understandings of the gospel, have different uh, understandings uh, of experiences that we've been through and, and whatever. That doesn't put one person down and it doesn't exalt another. And sometimes when we think that we're, we have it more together than others, then that probably proves that we've probably got a long way to go. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. So what I'm trying to say is we are all on different understanding, all on different levels, all at different experiences, but we are all trying to learn Jesus and, and living for Jesus, and we are just fall, falling in place with him. So be an encouragement to those around you. Amen? Encourage them. Strengthen them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I was talking to somebody this morning, uh, and, and Crystal and I have been talking about this here lately. I get so weary of hearing ministries cutting down other ministries and everybody trying to point fingers and say, well, they're not doing it the right way because we're do, we do it this way and that's not the way, you know. Come on, we're, we're, we're fighting the same devil. Amen. We, we, we have different uh, uh, revelations and different understandings, but, but as long as, I mean, if we're, if we're uh, growing in the word of God, you may read us the same scripture I read and you may get a bit of a different interpretation. Uh, amen. That's okay. As long as we understand that Jesus Christ is the one in the only way and no other way to the Father but through Him. Amen. God will, the Holy Spirit will work out the rest of that stuff in us. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good stuff right there. I thought that was a shout moment, but y'all missed your chance. I'm moving on. <laughs> Amen. For some people, He revealed Himself as a star in the sky. For others, they found Him in the Word of God. Others found Him in the fire. Others found Him in the flood. Amen. Others have experienced his miraculous power and his miracle working power in their lives and others have experienced him through worship and praise. Amen. It doesn't make one right and one wrong. It just makes us all finding Jesus and coming together with hearing voices from the Lord that is bringing us to him. Amen. The question now becomes, what are we doing with this revelation? What are we doing with what, what God has given us? Scripture says freely we've been given, so now freely we should give. Freely we receive, freely give. In the song, God used the voice of a little shepherd to spread the news. But if we want people of our generation to know about a Savior that's been born, then it's up to us to declare it. Stop waiting for somebody else to tell your friends. Amen. You live the life that you need to live in front of your friends and you declare the word that needs to be declared and let God work through you. Amen. Let us add our voices to this polyphonic sound. Do you hear what I hear? I hear the prophets saying Jesus is coming. I hear the word of God saying Jesus has come. Amen. I hear the people of God saying Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. And I want to be a part of that that vocal phrase that's being exalted to Jesus. Amen.